Hi, welcome to the part 14 of this video series. We are looking at some of the real certification questions linked with AWS Cloud Practitioner Certification. Please do not forget to subscribe to this channel. A lot of hard work and analysis goes in to produce such contents. Please do not forget to refer parts 1 through 13 of this video playlist or video series. There are hundreds of questions. Let's jump into this question. These are my two keywords. It is evident we are looking to reduce the cost of operation. Whenever you want to do that, CAPEX is cost effective compared to OPEX. That is, in this case, all upfront payment is the most cheapest one. Consider you go to buy a car and you say, I would not go for a financing option. I would not use EMIs. The dealer would give you the maximum bank for your dollar. So this is similar to CAPEX because you do all upfront payment. So if you see no upfront, this you are billed for a discounted hourly rate. Okay. And you see who can take upfront, no upfront option if you have a very successful billing history. It's similar to credit cards. If you have a very good credit history, if you are from States or America, you know what is the importance of having a good credit history. See, hourly would be expensive because, you know, renting a car per hour is more expensive than owning the car. All upfront is owning the car. Options A and B are like renting a car on an hourly basis. Partial upfront is like you pay some and then you go for OPEX. That is, you go for a monthly EMI with lower cost. Definitely C is better than A and B, but C is not better than D. This is my final answer. Let us move to the next one. This is the keyword. You want to increase the availability and you want to mitigate the failures. You have to choose two answers. The first one talks about auto scaling. So you create a pool of EC2 instances this way and put them in an auto scaling group and you plug ELB, that is Elastic Load Balancer. So will auto scaling increase your availability? That is application availability, yes. If you have an application like Amazon.com and it was built on two EC2 instances, the moment the number of load for example, two EC2 instances could handle 100 user, concurrent users, and now certainly 100,000 users have logged in. So auto scaling will spawn the EC2 instances to address those 100,000 concurrent users, which increases your availability. That means none of the users felt that Amazon.com was not available. And indirectly, it avoided a failure because there was no error displayed for any user. So this is my first answer. The second one is wrong because checking the health of a service will not help you with availability and mitigating failures. C looks correct. What it says is you distribute your resources across multiple AZs. Leverage these white papers, which explains these concepts. I will still explain at a high level. So you have an application which is deployed on AZ1. You see here AZ1, AZ2. Okay, and this is region one. So if you do a multi-AZ deployment, the advantage you have is if this goes cross, that means not available, it falls, it fails but your application will not see an impact because AZ2 will cater to those user base. Therefore, C is the right answer because what it does with multi-AZ is your availability of the application increases.
okay the second thing is it is more cognizant of failures beforehand and the failures will not occur now the problem with d is will d work what is your thought on this my take is before we even go for a multi-region i would first do a multi-ac which is option c c is more correct than option d you see here in this diagram i have one region with two ACs. I would first exhaust this option before I can do another region with multiple ACs. Okay, I would not do region two unless I have exhausted the region one and all ACs of that region. The last one talks about points of presence. Always remember points of presence is used in conjunction with cloud front okay because its main purpose is to provide low latency for your applications like netflix so that people do not see buffering happening and if there are live events so if you want to deliver high visibility live streaming events like a super bowl or football and so on then you use this service point of presence is not I repeat, is not a solution to increase availability and mitigate failures. These are the two right answers. Let's look at this one. The question is a bit twisted. What it is asking is that out of these options, which are the ones which AWS will take care? That is, it is pure and solely AWS responsibilities. Patching database software, this is an AWS responsibility. Consider the usage of Amazon Redshift. It is a columnar database which comes in a software as a service model. And what happens is that AWS owns the responsibility of patching the database softwares, upgrading them. Hence, this is my first answer. Let us look at option B, which is storage capacity planning. These are the data centers of Amazon and the hardware for the storage capacity is AWS responsibility. You do not even have access to get inside these locations. So I found my second answer. Now creating database schemas, this is purely your responsibility as a customer. Because it is you who decide whether you want to use RDS and within RDS, if you want to use Aurora or MySQL or MariaDB or Oracle or Postgres. It is your responsibility and hence this is wrong in this context because AWS will not do this for you. Setting up access controls for data is your responsibility. You understand your data. You know which fields are personal and sensitive so it is you who would set up the access controls. Hence, this is wrong in this context. AWS has no role to play here. And the last option that is writing application code, no brainer, cloud environments don't do that automatically for you. It is not AWS responsibility. It is your responsibility as a customer so these are my two options. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit the like button if you like these contents. This brings us to the end of part 14. See you in the next part. But before I go, let me play the questions and answers we discussed in this video.